Hello, welcome back. So this video will walk you through the process of setting up a DevOps pipeline, including all the tools and technologies that are commonly used in all the big corporations. Okay, so let's get started. And this will be more like a theoretical based and I'll just try to explain all the needs and all the other requirements that are there. So what is a DevOps pipeline definition? First of all, you just need to understand that. Well, a DevOps pipeline is a set of automated process that basically allows you or in you know your organization to build test and deploy software applications quickly and efficiently it is a kind of way to streamline the development and the deployment of the software that you're building with the goal of improving you know this speed and the reliability of delivering new features and updates to your users for example you know you have a customer's base for your application or the product that you're building and they sometimes might ask for a particular feature or something and you need to build that right and if you don't have, don't have a devops setup in place it might take you a long time and it like you need to do a lot of manual testing and also plans and then build those and you know monitor deploy so a lot of stuff but if you do it automated way it will just save a lot of time for you and the pipeline typically consists of several stages such as code development testing and deployment each stage is automated with tools and process in place to ensure that the code is high quality and it's like always ready to be shipped to the users the pipeline is designed it should be designed in a flexible and adaptable way and it should allow the organization to make changes and improvements as needed on a like urgent basis right a well-defined pipeline allows an organization to streamline its software development and deployment process resulting in faster delivery of new features and updates to its user this can help organizations to stay competitive and meet their demands for their customers having a automated process for testing and quality assurance it also ensures that the software being released is high quality and bug free right it is like well tested so this will reduce the risk of bugs and other issues that will eventually improve overall user experiences and having a good you know setup of a pipeline for devops it also promotes you know to collaborate among team members as it clearly defines the roles and responsibilities of each team member and how they fit into a particular process so this can be improved team work you know improving teamwork efficiency and communication resulting in more efficient and effective development and deployment having a well-defined pipeline also helps provide traceability accountability as it allows organization to track all the process of each and every stage of the development and the deployment process so this helps identifying any bottlenecks or any issue that might occur or might be slowing down the process in the whole development pipeline cycle right and it allows the organization to make improvements as needed and having a well-defined pipeline in devops it's really important these days for improving the efficiency quality and collaboration traceability all that of the software development and deployment process it really helps any organization to deliver their value to the customers more quickly and efficiently how do you set up a devops pipeline first of all then there are some key points that like identifying the tools and technologies that will be used in the pipeline this includes choosing a source code management like a get or something else like there are some others like but people like really prefer get uh, build servers such as jenkins and a deployment tool such as ansible or puppet it is very important to choose tools that are well suited to the needs of the organization and the software being developed so this is where most of the understanding comes into the place is that if you don't have a good understanding as to which tool you should choose and how you should proceed with them it really you know becomes a pain yeah, okay so this is why most of the understanding and the time gets consumed while learning about devops that you should have an understanding about all these tools not necessarily in the initial days but once you start to learn learn and go through these understanding becomes a really key integ part and set up a code repository for storing and versioning out so the code repository is where all the source code for the software or the application that you're building will be stored and versioned so it could be github it could be gitlab it could be aws code deployment or anything right this could be a cloud-based service also 
as just just mentioned that GitHub or maybe a on-premise solution which is the GitLab that I also mentioned or if like if uh, if your company is having a self-hosted service generate company just directly directly choose AWS or GCP or something else barely any like company or any organization they like so self host self host that their code base because it's first of all it's you know difficult to maintain and then secondly it's uh, not not really suitable for a business and the third thing is that you need to set up a build server for de building and testing the code why it is mandatory is that the build server is responsible for building and testing the code it can be configured to automatically build and test the code every time it is committed to the code repository without that if you want to you know code something and then you just directly want to push it to somewhere and if there is no testing involved in the process or the pipeline right you will never know if there's any issue or not and you will end up having a lot of bugs and you know failures and errors in your production so that's really important to have a building and testing server fourth is that you need to have a setup of deployment tools for releasing code to production the deployment tool is responsible for releasing the code to production this could be an automated tool such as ansible or puppet or it could be a manual process also then fifth is you need to set up monitoring and log management tools for tracking and performance the and the scalability of the application right so this is where like you first do the testing then de releasing then deploy and operation monitor so this is where i'm talking about that you need to set up the monitoring and log management tools for tracking the performance and stability of the application these tools are used to track the performance and stability right for example it could include tools for monitoring the application uptime tracking errors or analyzing log data generally these includes prometheus or grafana right there are tools and fifth uh, sixth is that you need to establish a process for code review and approval so this is where this happens like you know after your plan then you go to the code phase and then you deploy so before deploying and you know after pushing the code this is where you need to set up the review and approval process so what's that like it's first of all it's very important to have a process in place where reviewing and approving code changes before they are released to production why this could involve a code review process wherein any changes are reviewed by other team members before being approved for release and there are two situations which can happen it's like if you directly push something to the production and if like there are other team members that are also working on the same project and some of your project product or the code that you have written you know gets broken and then it's up to you right then you you are at risk so that's why it's always better to have the code reviewed by someone else in the team and then you proceed further right and same should go for the other team members like if you are also in a position then they should also review the code via you so all of you guys are sync you know and it, it should be an easy process seventh is the implementation you know implement automated testing as i mentioned that automated testing can help ensure the code being released is high quality and this could include unit testing integration testing end-to-end -end testing smoke testing flag testing and there are a lot of testing uh, i might go as well in the testing part and make a video about that anyways and you also need to have a setup uh, the rollback plan what is a rollback 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 plan okay <laughs> okay so it's a plan where in place for rolling back code changes in case of any issues right for example as i said there's a xyz feature that you just recently post and you see that okay shit there are some other things that you needed to add but and now because of that it's not working perfectly and these are these are also breaking some other things that are already present and that was working fine so in that kind of situations it could involve creating a separate environment for testing new code and uh, changes before they are released to productions or having a process in place of quickly reverting the code if necessary always have a backup plan that you know if you push something you should have a way that you revert back and you know you're safe right so let's talk about all the best practices for setting up a devops pipeline first of all use automated tools and process as much as possible Automation can really help, you know, streamline the development and deployment process, reducing the risk of errors and improving efficiency. This could include automation tasks such as building and testing code, 
deploying code to production and monitoring the application in production secondly keep the pipeline simple and focused on delivering value to its end users why because a simple pipeline is easier to understand and maintain which can help reduce the risk of errors and improve efficiency it is important to focus on the essentials component and of the pipeline and to eliminate all the unnecessary steps that are there right and if you're you know creating a devops pipeline from the scratch try to minimize all the unnecessary steps and be to the point that helps you know uh, cost cutting that also helps utilize and streamline the process third is use version control for all components of the pipeline what is that again version control is a important aspect of devops and it allows any organization or even if your personal project to track changes or rollback code changes if there's any necessity it is important to use version control for all components of the pipeline including the source code build script and the deployment script fourth you should always have a clear rollback plan in case of any failures on error okay because if you don't have again you're gonna get fucked up okay okay monitoring and measure the performance of the pipeline this is the fifth point where it's very you know frugal point that if you don't regularly monitor or measure your performance there's no point of having a devops okay so it is always important to regularly monitor and measure the performance of the pipeline to identify any bottlenecks or issues that may be slowing down the process this can help the organizations to make improvements and optimize the pipeline as needed foster a culture of collaboration and communication in your organization or the place that you're working why because collaboration and communication are the key aspect of devops this is another point where devops is again meant to you know build a good collaboration and communication they really help ensure that team members are working together effectively and it is important to have a culture and of collaboration and communication within the organization to encourage the open communication and teamwork again among all the team members okay let's uh, talk about some case studies where i'll just go over some examples of organizations that have successfully set up a devops pipeline okay netflix has implemented a highly automated devops pipeline which allows them to release code updates to their streaming platform multiple times per day so they used variety of tools and technologies to implement the pipeline including aws netflix oss so it's it's a set of open source tooling for building and deploying cloud cloud based applications and they have also used they are using spinnaker it's again an open source continuous deploying delivery platform okay then we have hc hc also has implemented a very good ci cd pipeline where it allows them to deploy code changes to production multiple times per day again and they have used variety of tools and technologies implement to their pipeline like jenkins docker and ansible and while talking about docker most of the companies they use docker is not just that hc so like it's we use docker to build and like you know build images from docker files okay and build and run all the images so then we have amazon obviously amazon is very famous for its one of the big biggest product which is aws so they have you know implemented a highly automated devops pipeline and most of their uh, pipeline contains about a the aws itself jenkins then the code pipeline they have also th their own code pipeline which is aws ci cd right then we have google they again do the same thing and they have tools like jenkins kubernetes gates and all that like these and uh, all these that i'm saying these are coming from like open source data that i'm talking about okay and then we have capital one they're also using the similar manner but one of the things that they have done is that they have also implemented a continuous delivery platform called bakery which automates the process of building and deploying code changes to production directly right and it's kind of worth noting that these are the just few examples and there are many other organizations that have successfully set up devops pipelines using a wide range of tools so the specific tools and technologies used will depend on the needs and the requirements of the organizations so there are some lessons obviously that uh, are learned and kind of best practices that can be applied to these organizations that you know 
collaboration which is a key thing here it really requires the devops really requires close collaboration between development and operations team as well as other stakeholders such as qa which is quality assurance and security it is important to establish strong communication channels and encourage a culture of collaboration to ensure that all the teams are working towards the same goal okay then you try to automate as much as possible it is another very key aspect to have a set you know set of successful devops pipeline by automating such tasks like testing deployment and monitoring you can really reduce the time it takes to deliver code changes and improve the reliability and stability of your systems so there is one thing called concourse ci that you can also use for these kind of situations to automate everything then you have continuous integration and delivery which is ci cd it's just an adoption practice that these kind of ci cd uh, by adopting these you can really ensure that code changes are integrated and deployed quickly and safely okay and then you need to do a measurement and monitoring on a kind of daily basis that having a monitoring and performing really helps to continuously monitor and measure key metrics such as deployment frequency lead time and mean time to recovery this will allow you to identify or any address any issue to quickly and make any continuous improvement to your pipeline then another one is very essential which is security and compliance what is that devops doesn't just apply to any development and operations teams to be exact it's just it's also important to consider security and compliance in the pipeline okay make sure that you have appropriate measures in place to ensure that code changes are secure and compliant with relevant regulations overall it is very important to remember that every organization is different and will have their unique requirements and challenges when setting up a devops pipeline it's important to be flexible and adapt accordingly to the approaches that is needed to meet your specific needs this same thing is also applied uh, in my uh, you know startup where i'm actually working i just recently joined a startup there as a devops an infra engineer okay so similarly i have to take decisions relating the pipeline as i am the main person who is setting up everything and so if i mess up somewhere it will be on my shoulder that i messed up so it's very essential that whatever the needs is we need to be very skeptical and think critical and take the decisions okay and that's kind of it so i'll just uh, end this video with the conclusion that a well defined devops pipeline is very important delivering value to the end user right because it helps to ensure that code changes are integrated tested and deployed in a reliable and a efficient manner this can help to reduce the risk of errors and improve the speed at which any new feature and functionality are delivered to the end user okay by automating task like testing deployment you can really ensure that it is fully tested and verified okay that's that's all about like setting up a pipeline so this is more like a theoretical part uh, slowly i'll try to give you actual hands on and how we really set up all these things and i i'm like i promise that i'll not be like other who that just that just just shows random thing and doesn't re re really make sense so i'll try to be concise and uh, try to show you actually what it takes to be on that okay so that's it see you on the next video bye